Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show as we all settle into the reality of the new work week of 2016 this Tuesday morning. And I think if you're one of those people that's really sinking your teeth into getting into work, you might just feel that your holiday was slightly too short. And if that's the case, well, then Graham is up next with some of 2016's hottest travel destinations. So Richard Burton once said, the gladdest moment in human life is a departure into unknown lands. We're talking top travel destinations for 2016 and joining us in studio again this morning, international blogger and writer Dawn Jurgensen from The Incidental Tourist to give us her insight into this year's top lonely planet picks. Dawn, welcome back again. Um, I'm going to list the top five cities as they've stated them. So we've got coming in at number one, Qatar and Montenegro, a two, Quito in Ecuador, three, Dublin in Ireland, four, Georgetown in Malaysia, and five, Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Now, I know Dublin, I can see your eyes light up. That was a big pick for you. Um, they've got it at number two. Why would this be your number one city? I think it's because I'm a quarter Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Big so game, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be a bit biased. No, I just I find that Dublin is incredibly appealing and a little bit underrated. So mm. um, definitely a city for walking. You've got Temple Bar, which people think is a little sleazy, but it's actually full <laughs> of lots of you know crafty, beautiful places and artisan shops and bars and lovely hotels. There's the river that runs through it. You can go and swim in the ocean, even if it's freezing cold. <laughs> there's Trinity Useless, College. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, again, a storehouse. It really just is a city that you want to walk. And it's so easy to do that because it's got a heart that is, is easy to get around in. Nice and accessible. I've heard the people the are awesome Irish as well. Irish are so yeah. charming. That <laughs> accent is going to be one of the best. Um, so we look at uh, Rome now. It's, it's right up there for you, but only features as number 10 on their list. Why do you think that is? Is it a bit overdone? Is it still a destination that we should be picking out for 2016? I love their choices. I think there's so many places there that many of us haven't heard of, let alone been to. But Rome is going to have a big year. The Pope has called it the Year of Mercy. Oh, wow. And he plans to do very good things, heartfelt things, um, out of Rome and Vatican City. It's also the year that the Colosseum is going to be unveiled after its, its new overview. Yeah. So I think that's something wow. to look out for. And the Trevi Fountain has also had a, a big scrub up. So I think you'll have all the magical things that we go to Rome for and love Rome for, like the, you know, the, the historical buildings, Roman Forum, just the history of the, the place. Yeah. But then you're also going to have these new looks on old places and you can have your gelato and you can eat Italian food <laughs> and everyone is charming so from the source, yeah. I think that no one could ever tire of Rome uh, and I think it'd be a good idea to book now if, if it's got that many tourist attractions now let's look at the top five best value destinations as a South African traveling on the Rand at the moment value is very important we um, list them again one to five Estonia Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi in Vietnam East Africa New Mexico Bosnia and Herzegovina now um, some interesting choices there, some no surprise, some big surprises. Ho Chi Minh City, I know you love Vietnam and that part of the world. Talk to me about that. I think with Iran that Asia is still a good option for us and Vietnam definitely has good value. One of the things that makes Ho Chi Minh very, very affordable is the street food. You know, you've, you've got this incredibly vibrant, basically chaotic city that functions so well. There are just motorbikes everywhere with one or two or three or four people on them. You know, families going about. It's crossing is at your own, a road is at your own risk. <laughs> it's really amazingly vibrant, but you've got just, a, you can find affordable accommodation. You can eat off the street. There are lots of walking tours. There's a lot of attractions. You can bring in the historic element if you want to learn a little bit about the war. There are war memorials. But if you just want to soak up the atmosphere um, and, and you have that tradition, traditional Vietnam feel, um, as well as this modern, wonderful sense that Asia always gives you. I heard you can pick up an awesome suit there as well you for can. next to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, finally, I love the fact that you, you've also highlighted this East Africa. I went to West Africa last year, the gateway into Africa, very much through Ghana and Accra. Um, what is it about East Africa that makes you excited? What destinations in particular? Well, I've been very lucky because I've been to Uganda, Tanzania, um, and Kenya. So I feel like it's a little bit of, of an extension of my stomping ground when we look at <laughs> Africa. And um, I, I do feel that these are very accessible destinations, especially if you're flying out of Johannesburg. Mm. Kenya, and you know, Africa's had a bit of a rough year in 2015 yeah. with Ebola and people not very being very geographically savvy. I think that people thought that they were at risk traveling anywhere in Africa, which is not so. Yeah. So 
I think that these countries have struggled a bit with tourism, so the rates are really good. You can get great bargains. If you wanted to combine the magic of bush and beach, you probably wouldn't get a better place yeah, to do it. Sure. You can go into the Maasai Mara, which is absolutely magical, and then you can follow it with a place like Watamu um, on the East Coast, where you can just be on the beach and there's lots of water sports. There's a total rescue center if you wanted to do some conservation work. Um, Tanzania, incredible packages into Zanzibar, yeah. so and Uganda for gorilla tracking. So you really can look at that area or that little region, and there are affordable packages that will give you something that is not only African, but will just it's a lifetime of memories that you can say, make there. Completely, <coughs> excuse me, unforgettable. Getting a little choked up thinking about the gorilla trail. <laughs> now I love the fact that you always have a conservation drive underpinning everything that you do in your travel adventure. So. Good luck, go and save Thank some more you. lives, go and experience some wonderful adventures out there and please stay safe, but all the best for 2016. Thank you, I hope it's a year filled with travel that matters. Oh, I think it's going to be. Well, where would you most like to go on holiday or go to make a difference in 2016? You can let us know on our Facebook page or you can tweet us using the hashtag Expresso Show.